Hello and welcome to Para Not So Normal and if you are watching here on YouTube, hello and welcome back to the channel. Thank you all so much for listening in. Today I'm going to talk to you all about how to connect with your spirit guides and angels and just those on the other side. A lot of you ask me, how do I connect with my spirit guides? How do I connect with my angels? I feel like I try to connect with them and they're simply not there. First of all, let me tell you that you do have spirit guides. We all have spirit guides. We all have angels. And it's okay if you feel like you can't connect with them. That's normal for most people and does not mean that they're not there. They're there. They're rooting for you. They're wanting the best for you. And they are sending you signs. It's just a matter of tuning in and tapping into that to receive those messages back. And some people receive messages in different ways. So just because somebody might be able to communicate with their spirit guides and angels in one particular way, it could look very different for you. And that's fine, right? We're all on our own journey. And, you know, just like anything in life, right? Some things work for some people and other things work better for other people. It doesn't mean one way is better than the other. So if you're trying to connect with your guides and angels in one particular way and it's not working, don't be discouraged maybe try doing something else. Um, but let's kind of just jump right into it and I'll talk to you about the different ways that you can try to connect with your guides. So first of all, the first thing that I would say and most important is to have patience, okay? Don't get frustrated if you're feeling like you're not making a connection. Be patient with it. Sometimes guides and angels, they might not directly connect with you because of whatever reason um, they might feel like they're you're not ready or maybe for whatever reason they're they might be holding back for a certain reason but it doesn't mean they're not there and sometimes when people try to connect with their guides a lot of people really want like an inter a lot of people want a humane interaction so what i mean by that is we're so used to talking to people face to face or over the phone and having a verbal type of conversation. However, communicating with your guides can sometimes look a lot different. So it maybe they, they are messaging you or maybe they are trying to contact you, but you're not noticing it because maybe they're trying to connect with you in ways that you're simply not familiar with. Okay, so be patient is number one and be open-minded to different ways for example if you're trying to communicate with your guides through meditation and it's not happening that's okay just focus on the meditation and maybe you'll be able to make contact with your guides in another way the first thing i would say is ask 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 you can ask verbally you can ask in your head it doesn't matter but let the universe know let your guides know let your angels know say hey i want i am ready to meet you um i want a sign from the universe angels i want a sign from my angels guides i want a sign from my guides i want i want to meet you i want to know you're here show me so just ask and of course ask and don't be demanding or anything like that you always want to show gratitude because they are here on your journey to help support you through this journey here on earth so it's always important to show that you know you're grateful for that but ask there's no shame in asking that's step number one is to ask number two so there's different ways you can actually communicate with your guides one way yes is through meditation you can ask your guides i'm i'm ready to connect um, you can try to meditate and this might take quite a bit of time for some people because meditation is not easy for most and i even struggle with meditation often because it's hard sometimes to quiet the mind so that's okay if you're not being successful in communicating with your guides through meditation it doesn't mean you should stop meditating you absolutely should continue meditating because there are so many benefits to meditation however maybe try to communicate with your guides in a different way you can even ask them to come to you in a dream you could say come to me in a dream um, something like that it could you can ask your angels your guides or even a past loved one you can ask them to visit you in your dreams because when you're in the dreaming realm that is very very close to the spiritual realm so it's easier for them to c contact us is kind of in the dreaming state so dreaming is one way and again don't be frustrated if you're asking for them to come to you in your dreams and they're not um, there could be a couple reasons for this maybe maybe for whatever reason you're they feel you're not ready to meet them in a dream 
Or maybe they are meeting you in your dreams, but you're simply not remembering when you wake up. And that is very common as well. So don't beat yourself up over that. If you haven't been able to make contact through dreams, there are other ways, which I'm about to get into. So don't worry. So some other signs that aren't so in your face, I guess you can say, such as dreaming or meeting them through meditation other ways are things such as music songs have you ever maybe had like a bad day or maybe even a good day or something and then you get into the car and the song playing on the radio or whatever song turns on or whatever song is playing in the store or wherever you are sometimes whatever song you're listening to it's crazy because it's like whoa this song is basically speaking to me because sometimes lyrics in music and songs they hit different right sometimes they can relate to very specific instances in your life For example, if you're going through something difficult and then all of a sudden a song pops on the radio that's very similar to what you're going through, it kind of might give you inspiration and might make you feel a little better. And that's a very common way that guides will try to interact. Again, it's a way where you might not think, oh, it's my guides, but I truly don't believe in coincidences. I don't think there are such things as coincidences. I think things happen for a reason. And instances such as that, I believe they're kind of put in front of you on purpose. I think it's your guides, angels, past loved ones, or whoever it may be, kind of sending you a message. So it could be, they could be contacting you in the smallest in the smallest of ways, in simple ways such as that. Often your guides and angels will try to contact you via angel numbers. Now, I want to talk about angel numbers because a lot of people will say, oh, what does 111 mean? What does 222 mean? What does 444 mean? Etc. Etc. And sometimes specific angel numbers do mean specific things they can hold a specific message for you however i find that most of the time they actually don't what i find personally is when i see angel numbers so i see angel numbers very frequently i see them every single day and i see them throughout the day and i don't go and look up every single angel number every time i see one what i'll take it as is okay my guides are with me they're saying hi they're letting me know that they're here and they're supporting me Or a big thing for me is sometimes I'll be thinking something in my head and I'll look up and I'll see an angel number. And to me, that's like, okay, that's confirmation that whatever I was thinking of, maybe that was a guide giving me that message because sometimes that it could come through as thoughts and sometimes you might think it's your own thought. However, it's actually a thought of your guide or angel kind of giving you that thought. Or seeing that angel number can simply be your guides confirming your thought. They could say, let's say you're thinking of a business idea, for example. Oh, I wonder if I should do this, blah, blah, blah. And then you look up and you see an angel number. It could be your guide saying like, that would absolutely be a great idea for you. Something like that. So that's kind of what I like to say in regards to angel numbers and whatnot. Um, Most of the time, it's just simply them saying, hey, we're here. Um, We're supporting you or it could confirm a thought that you have. But sometimes it absolutely does mean specific messages. And if it does mean a specific message, normally you'll just kind of know. You'll have this inner feeling. I remember at one point in my life, I all of a sudden just started seeing 555 every single day. And when I say I was seeing it every day, I was seeing it every day, multiple times a day. And I was like, okay, I am seeing 555 for a reason. I don't normally see 555 that's one of the angel numbers i don't normally see so i went online and i looked up what 555 meant i looked up the significance of it spiritually and basically what it said was big change is coming change is coming however um, even though change can be scary it is for your greater good at the end of the day and literally a day later my boyfriend and i broke up and i was living with him for the past two years so my life totally did a 180 and I took that as my angels kind of letting me know like okay something is about to change in your life you are going through a huge period of change and that's exactly what happened and even now a few months later I still see 555 quite a lot so that's another way your angels and guides can try to contact you 
it's another way that they might be sending you signs and synchronicities just kind of letting you know they're there um, I wouldn't get too caught up in angel numbers though some people think that they have to search up every single one they see that's not necessarily the case like I said it could just simply them being like hey I'm here I'm supporting you you're not alone so another way you can contact your guides or communicate with your guides is to really be present in the moment. It is so easy to go about your day and just kind of go through the motions of the day, right? You get up, you make your bed, brush your teeth, take a shower, whatever it is that you do, get changed, eat breakfast, go to work. And it's like you're mindlessly going through these tasks daily, but you're not really being present in the moment. And when you're not being present, it is so easy to miss the signs. It is so easy to miss signs. And what I've noticed through my own experience is when I've slowed down and when I have taken to t when I have taken the time to be mindful and when I have taken the time and made an effort to be present in the moment, it's amazing how many more signs I notice. And it's small, simple things that most people would not notice because they're just going through the motions of their day. They're just kind of going through the their mundane tasks mindlessly. And because so many of us do that, and don't get me wrong, I do that sometimes too. It's really easy to get caught up in the day to day, but that's when it becomes easy to miss the signs. And that's when a, a lot of people question, wait, do I have guides? Do I have angels? I don't think I do. They don't make themselves known. And it's, and it's like, that's when you have to ask yourself, okay, are they not making their self known? Or am I simply missing the signs because I am not allowing myself to slow down enough to see them? If that makes sense. Like for example, I'll give you one sign that a lot of people probably wouldn't think, a lot of people probably wouldn't think much of, but I knew that it was my guides sending me a message. So when my boyfriend and I broke up a few months back, the place I'm in now, I remember signing the one year lease and being like, okay, like, you know, fingers crossed. I hope this is the right move. I hope it doesn't bite me in, in the butt at the end. Anyways, I signed the lease and as I was driving back to my old place, I was at a red light and my windows were rolled up and all of a sudden there was a bee in my car. And I'm thinking like, it wasn't even bee season quite yet. The bees weren't really out yet. I hadn't seen a single bee yet that year, which was just this past year. I hadn't seen a single bee yet. And I'm thinking, how the heck did a bee get in my car? Like my windows were rolled up. They were not down. I, it's not even really summer quite yet. I haven't even seen a bee yet this year. Why is this bee in my car? And then it flew on me and I kind of freaked out because at first I was scared I was going to get stung. And when you're driving, you're focused on the road. So I was definitely distra distracted and I smacked the bee off of me. And normally when you aggravate a bee, what does a bee do? It stings you. However, the bee didn't sting me. It simply kind of disappeared. And I was like, what the heck? That's weird. Where did the bee go? So fast forward, I'm at a red light. And because I was at a red light, I started looking around for the bee because as I was driving, I smacked it off of me because it scared me. And then it was gone. And then I was at the red light and I'm looking around for the bee and I'm thinking, where the heck did the bee go? This is really, really weird. Whatever. I forgot about it. But what I did do was I rolled down my window just the tiniest bit in case the bee did come back out so I can try to swat the bee out of my car. Because I don't know about you, but I do not like driving in my car when there's a bee <laughs> flying around in my car. Anyways, I'm sitting at the red light and all of a sudden the bee flies and lands on my lap again. And at this point though, I didn't freak out. This intense calm just washed over me. This intense calming feeling washed over me. I looked down at the bee and the bee was just sitting there just so peacefully. And I just felt this intense calmness. I don't know how to explain it, but I just felt like in that moment, everything was okay. And I felt that everything was going to be okay. And it was just this internal knowing that I had. And as I was looking at the bee, it sat there for a while and then it simply flew up and flew out my window. It didn't touch me. Well, it was on my lap, but it didn't sting me or anything like that. And in that moment, right after that, the light turned green again. And in that moment, I knew that was a sign from my guides. And I was like, oh my gosh, they were definitely trying to tell me something. I am going to look up the spiritual significance of bees. 
So I did that. And basically what it meant was new beginnings. Um, good things are coming for you. This is the start of a new chapter in your life, et cetera, et cetera. So I really took that as confirmation that I made the right decision by signing this lease. To me, that was my guides telling me, don't worry, you made the right decision signing the lease. We're with you. We're supporting you. Everything is going to be okay. This is a start of a completely new journey in your life and we're supporting it. And I'm getting chills just talking about that story again, but it was such an incredible, such an incredible experience. And I'll give you another example of another personal I'll give you another example of a sign that I got that again, most people or a lot of people simply wouldn't notice because again, it's such a simple thing. So if you follow me on TikTok, you know that I communicate with my past grandpa. I call him Vuvu because that's how you say it in Portuguese and that's how I grew up calling my grandpa. So my Vuvu and he passed when I was quite young. I was probably about five years old. So my recollection, my recollection of him in life is not that great because I was really young when he passed. However, one core memory I do have of him was him giving me these Werther's original candies. If you don't know what they are, they're kind of like this caramelly hard candy. And I remember being with him one day and him slipping me some candies and being like, shh, don't tell your dad. Ever since then, every time I see a Werther's original, it makes me think of my Vuvu. And again, if you follow me on TikTok, you know that I communicate now with my Vuvu all the time and he does claim to be one of my spirit guides. And I talk to him through a divination tool, my dowsing rods. However, in, in this moment, I wasn't using my dowsing rods or anything. So every time I see Werther's originals, it reminds me of my grandpa. I was at a restaurant and this was again during the time of my transition when I was moving from my place with my ex to my new place that I'm at now. I was I went to a pho restaurant, or sorry, I should say pho. It's pronounced pho. So I went to a pho restaurant, and at Vietnamese restaurants and at sushi restaurants, what I notice is they often have these little candies, these little fruit candies, and they're really small. They'll, they'll be like strawberry, blueberry, peach, mango, and they'll give like a few candies after you eat um, with the bill. And that's quite common for those restaurants. However, at this restaurant, I remember going up to the front to pay and they had a little bowl of those candies. And I look, I'm like, oh, nice. Like I might grab one for the road. And then I did a double take because there was a Werther's original sitting in that bowl of candies and there was only one. And again, I took that as confirmation as, or I took that as like my grandpa being like, you're not alone during this hard time. I'm here, I'm with you and I'm supporting you. And I just kind of knew that in my gut. And it's funny because literally a day after that, as I was walking into work, I saw a Werther's original wrapper on the floor, which these candies are not, it's not like a candy I see everywhere. It's kind of rare if I come across a Werther's original. So I really took that as my grandpa being like, hey, I'm with you. I'm supporting you. You're not alone. Keep doing what you're doing. You're doing great. So it's small little things like that. And if you're not being present in the moment, it's really, really easy to miss those signs. And I have uh, so many personal stories of these small little things, but I'll, uh, I'll stop it there and I'll continue with the other ways that you can try to communicate with your guides. Maybe I'll finish it off with one last story, my most recent story. However, let's continue. So another way you can communicate with your guides is via journaling. So if you're into journaling, that's a really good way. With some people, they'll just kind of free write after meditation and sometimes just thoughts will come to their mind especially after meditation because often after meditation your mind is more quiet there's not as many things running through your mind so that presents your guides with the opportunity to send you thoughts and to send you messages so just a free write after meditation and it doesn't have to be after meditating it could be at any time of the day it could be first thing in the morning that would be a really good time as well it could be right before you go to bed and just write write about anything don't think too much about it and sometimes thoughts will just flow to you and sometimes thoughts that you might never have thought that you would think of, if that makes sense. And those could be thoughts and messages from your guides as well. For some people, though, if you don't like writing, like don't feel like you have to do that. 
personally, I do journal, but it's not my main way to manifest or to try to communicate with my guides. I journal when I feel like journaling. Um, If I force myself to journal, then it often feels like a chore and you don't want it to feel like a chore either. So if you like writing though, and you like journaling, then that would be another great way. So that is something that I would recommend, but keep in mind that it is different for different people, just depending on what works best for you. Another great way to communicate with your guides is through divination tools. So things such as a pendulum, dowsing rods, oracle cards, tarot cards. You don't need to be a complete whiz to use these tools, okay? They're a tool, so they can help you connect. However, they're not necessary, so don't feel like you need to buy these things to make connection. However, they definitely can help. For me, for example, I do lots of oracle card readings for people especially. I do read tarot as well, but I prefer oracle cards. That's besides the point. I read for other people all the time, and it's quite... I don't want to say easy, but it comes very naturally for me to read for others, especially for people that I don't know. However, reading to myself can be quite difficult. You don't need to be a whiz to read for yourself. We're buy a set of oracle cards, buy a set of tarot cards, and they always come with a little booklet that will give you a description of what each of the cards mean. So what you could do if you feel if you're feeling like you want a message from your guide, simply grab whatever deck that you are called to that day. Just shuffle it around and pick a card. Just pick one card, take the book, the book that explains the meaning of each card, and read the message on there. That's another great way. It's a great way for guidance, and it kind of takes the thought process out of it. Like when I read for people, I just read based on the cards that come out and my intuition. I don't look at the guidebook, but if you're going to do it for yourself, that's what I like to do is I'll just take one card and I'll read that card on the guidebook. And you could use other divination tools such as pendulum, um, dowsing rods, and stuff like that. If you want me to talk about, if you want me to do another video talking about pendulums and dowsing rods, let me know. I do have a dowsing rod video with tips and tricks already, so check that out if you have dowsing rods and are interested in getting started with them. But yeah, divination tools are always a way to help you connect with your guides as well. And another way to communicate with your guides is an inner knowing. So intuition, and I don't really know how to explain it perfectly because this one one is more of just an internal knowing like if you're really in touch with your intuition sometimes a thought will come to your mind or something will come to mind and you just know in that moment that you're that whatever you're thinking of is a message from your guides this happens to me quite frequently where it's just an inner knowing or if you see something and whatever you're seeing you might think okay I I was meant to see this and I know I was meant to see this I don't know how I know I just know it's like that gut intuition and I'll give you a personal example to try to explain this a little better because this one is kind of challenging for me to explain so if so if you follow me on TikTok you'll know that I randomly found a four-leaf clover yesterday or a couple days ago I was walking home from the gym and I literally am just la-di-da walking and I turn my head and as I turn my head I look down and straight in my line of vision was a four leaf clover. I wasn't even looking for a four leaf clover. I just turned my head and that was the first thing that I saw. So right in that moment I knew, okay, my guides put that there or they guided my eyes to that spot because they want to tell me something. Maybe they're telling me luck is on my side. They're with me, whatever. I didn't think too much of it at the time. I just thought my guides want me to know that they're with me. They're supporting me. They are telling me that luck is on my side, that things are only going to get better from here. And it put me in a great mood. I was really happy. And then later that evening, I was sitting outside on my balcony with my roommate and I was like, hey, you won't believe what happened today. And I told her the story about how I found a four leaf clover. And as I was talking to her and as I was explaining the story, an image of a four leaf clover oracle deck card came to my mind. So in one of my or in one of my oracle decks, there is a card called serendipity and on that serendipity card is a four leaf clover and it shows like a little girl holding the four leaf clover and that image of the card came to my mind and it came to my mind strong it was this overwhelming extremely powerful feeling of you need to go read the guidebook right now and you need to read the message of this card and in that moment before even reading the message i knew that my guides were telling me to go read this guidebook because there was a message message in there for me that they wanted me to read at that moment. So as I was explaining this to my roommate, I was like, dude, 
I need to go grab my Oracle deck and I need to read the guidebook because I just got a vision of the four leaf clover card in one of my decks and I just knew in that moment my guides had a message for me. So I grabbed the card, I grabbed the guidebook, I come back out and I read the messages and on each card sometimes there are multiple messages. There will be the oracle message, the love message, career message and it just kind of depends on the deck. So I, I knew that there was a message for me in there for sure but I didn't expect the whole thing to resonate and as I was reading through it there was one particular message that was talking directly to me. It was absolutely insane the message on that book it was as though it was describing what i am going through in my life at this moment and very specific too extremely specific so i knew that that was the message that my guides wanted me to read and i got i'm getting chills now just thinking about it again but the amount of chills i got reading that i just i just knew it was an inner knowing like i had that vision and i knew that my guides wanted me to read that book because I knew there was a message for me and as I read the message I was like holy crap yeah absolutely that's exactly what I'm going through right now like I was in shock anyways that's just another that's another personal example but that just goes to show that your guides can communicate with you in multiple different ways it doesn't have to be the stereotypical meditation or dreaming not saying those are bad ways because those are very good ways to connect with your guides however a lot of people struggle connecting with their guides in that manner and that's absolutely okay don't beat yourself up over that i think what you should focus on if you're wanting to make connection with your guides is being more present meditating more often without the expectation of contacting your guides though like when you meditate go in with the mindset of quieting your mind don't go in with an expectation of making contact with anybody so being present in the moment meditation because that will help you with being present in the moment be patient have patience don't expect it to happen overnight really make an effort to start being present don't just go about your day and go through the motions really try to be present in everything that you do and i believe that if you start doing those things things will really start opening up for you and you will really start seeing more signs and of course you can do other things such as journaling divination and stuff like that however I think the biggest thing is really trying to be present in the moment and showing gratitude. And of course, don't forget to ask your guides. Tell them, say, hey, I'm ready. It would be an honor to meet you. I really want to meet you. Show me a sign. And one thing you can actually do, and I do this sometimes, and it works every single time, and it amazes me every single time. I'll say, okay, angels, guides, I need help with a decision or whatever it may be. Can you send me a sign? Like if I'm supposed to do this, whatever this may be, if I am supposed to go through with this, can you please show me a sunflower by the end of the day or by the end of tomorrow or by the end of the week, whatever it may be, give like a time frame, show me a sunflower. If I'm not supposed to do this, show me a balloon. And I would recommend saying something that's not so common. For example, if you say, show me a bumblebee by the end of the day and it's summertime, that's probably not the best thing to say because there's, well, at least where I live, there's bees, there will be bees everywhere. Um, So I would pick something that's not too common, you know what I mean? So it'll be something that will kind of take you by surprise if you do catch it. And then after you ask, look for those signs, look for the signs because they will be there. But yeah, that's basically everything that I have today. If this video was helpful, if you resonated with it, please let me know in the comments below. If you feel called to, I would really appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel. I'm brand new here on YouTube, so any little bit definitely helps me out. And if you're listening, on the para not so normal podcast thank you again so much for tuning in thank you all for being here and i hope that you enjoy the rest of your day bye